Welcome back to Arbor Unboxed. Today we're checking out my favorite Z370 motherboards. So it's another top five video, and the categories this time include best entry level, best value all-rounder, best of the best, best micro ATX, and the best mini ITX motherboard. There's loads of boards to go over, and we have multiple options from the likes of ASUS, ASRock, MSI, Gigabyte, Supermicro, and EVGA. So let's get into it, shall we? First up we have my entry level board, are you guys trying to save every last dollar for the GPU? There are a few candidates here and they're all priced between $120 and $130 US. There's the ASRock Z370 Pro 4, MSI Z370 A Pro, Gigabyte Z370 Aorus Gaming Wi-Fi and the ASUS Prime Z370P. The ASUS Prime Z370P, well that board looks okay, it's not great but a decent offering. That said though, we're gonna swipe left on that one. I swear ASUS is completely incapable of competitively pricing their motherboards. $140 US for a board with budget audio and networking and super underwhelming storage options. For $10 less, the Gigabyte Z370 Aorus Gaming Wi-Fi is an attractive option with its Intel Gigabit networking, Creative Core 3D audio, six SATA ports, and a wireless networking with Bluetooth. You can also get the ASRock Z370 Pro 4 at the same price, and while that board has a better VRM, it does away with the Wi-Fi support and offers a cheaper audio solution. Then we have the cheapest board, and arguably the best, the MSI Z370A Pro. Now this unassuming Z370 motherboard overclocks like a champ, pushing both 8th gen CPUs and DDR4 memory to the max. The feature set won't blow your socks off, but overall a high quality board that can't be beat at this price point. So MSI's Z370A Pro wins my best entry level board award. Coming in second, I agonized over the ASRock Z370 Pro 4, and Gigabyte Z370 Aorus Gaming Wi-Fi. Both are selling for $130 US right now. The ASRock board is arguably a better overclocker, but the Aorus Gaming is no slouch either. For me, the Gigabyte board is the more well-rounded offering, and it's really it offers an unbeatable feature set at this price point, so it's my well-deserved runner-up. For those willing to spend a little more, there's no shortage of options. The standouts for me include the ASUS Prime Z370A, MSI Z370 Gaming M5, the Gigabyte Z370 Aorus Ultra Gaming, and finally the ASRock Z370 Extreme 4. Again, the ASUS board, it's very solid, but sadly overpriced at $175 US. For me, it feels more like a $140-ish dollar motherboard. The other three boards, though, they're very evenly matched, and that makes picking one very difficult. That being the case, though, I don't think you can really go too wrong. Having said that, though, the Gigabyte Z370 Aorus Ultra Gaming, that has suffered a few reports of high VRM temps, and I've noticed quite mixed user reviews online, particularly at Newegg.com, so with possible issues there, I would look to either the MSI Z370 Gaming M5 or the ASRock Z370 Extreme 4. For me though, the ASRock Z370 Extreme 4 is the winner here. The board is not just the cheapest of the bunch, but it offers a great feature set and a very solid VRM. The user reviews for this one are also overwhelmingly positive everywhere you look. I'd also like to add that the ASRock UEFI is incredibly easy to navigate and overclocking is a breeze even for novice users. Still, if you can't get a Z370 Extreme 4, then a worthy alternative would be MSI's Z370 Gaming M5. It's also a very awesome looking motherboard as well. Right, so you want the best of the best and you don't care if your motherboard costs more than your CPU you've got money to burn. Well, in that case, you can skip over Gigabyte and ASRock, at least for now. Both are far too reserved for the likes of you. $220 for Gigabyte's Gaming 7 or ASRock's Tai Chi. You don't have time for that mainstream rubbish. ASUS also offers a number of high-end boards like the ROG Maximus X Apex, an interesting looking board for $350 US. The focus for the Apex is on overclocking, and that comes with a number of compromises, making this specialist motherboard a bit too focused for this category. Then there's the Maximus X Formula. Now, ASUS has caked that one in what they call thermal armor, I believe. It's just plastic. Uh, I've got an older Z77 board with the same sort of stuff. 
uh, this one does look actually worse, but even so, I feel like that kind of plastic shroud design, it's just a bit tacky and probably out of place on a motherboard costing $450 US. That's just my opinion anyway. There's also the MSI Z370 Godlike at an insane $500 US, but it's a pretty awesome motherboard, that one. Still, MSI's gone a bit overboard on the plastic bits here as well, and for reasons I'll never understand, they've shielded the VRM heat sinks from airflow using plastic covers. They've got RGB though, so worth it, am I right? Seriously though, I can't really give MSI too much of a hard time over that. The Z370 Godlike is an amazing motherboard. I've been able to reach an incredible 5.3 GHz overclock with the 8700K, and that is something that no other Z370 board that I've tested yet can replicate. Despite the plastic shrouds though, the VRM temp under full load remains surprisingly low. We're talking around 70 degrees here, which is most impressive. So a well-deserved win here for MSI, even if the board does cost $500 US, though the feature set is unlike anything I've seen before. If you've got 24.4 by 24.4 centimeters worth of motherboard tray to fill, which Z370 motherboard should you get? Well, your options are extremely limited, unfortunately. There are just three ways to go that I'm aware of, and just one of them makes sense. The ASRock Z370M Pro 4 is the obvious choice here, and it's the micro ATX version of the similar sounding Z370 Pro 4 that we looked at earlier. Priced at $130 US, you get a very solid VRM, four DIMM slots, six SATA ports, Intel Gigabit LAN, and two PCIe 3.0 times 16 slots, though of course the second slot is only wired for times 4 bandwidth. For considerably more, we once again find an ASUS motherboard, this time the ROG Strix Z370G Gaming. That can be had for $185 US, but you'll be hard pressed to work out what you're getting for that extra $55. ASUS does offer a better audio solution. You also get wireless networking with a few extra USB ports. That said, you also get tightly packed PCIe x16 slots and VRM heatsinks without proper fins. Then there's the insanely underwhelming EVGA Z370 121KS E375KR. You have to wonder what it is about the model names of monitors that made EVGA think, hey, that's pretty slick, let's do the same for our motherboards. Anyway, horrible naming aside, seriously put that right out of your mind because you're going to need all the available processing power to tackle the price. It's $200 US. Yep, $200 US, and you get nothing more than a single Intel Gigabit network connection, uh, no wireless networking, uh, basic Realtek ALC1220 codec, standard storage configuration, and a basic USB configuration. I do mean basic, there is no Type C. So at that price point, I think we can just skip that one altogether. So ASRock and their practical little Z370M Pro 4 wins this category almost by default. Now, I know what you're thinking, Microtex motherboards, they're pretty big, but don't worry, we do have something smaller. There are quite a few nice mini ITX Z370 motherboards on offer, and the three most expensive and best include the ASUS ROG Strix Z370i Gaming for $190 US, as well as the ASRock Fatality Z370 Gaming ITX slash AC, and the MSI Z370i Gaming Pro Carbon AC, both of those cost $180 US. Of those three boards, I don't think you can really go too wrong. I do like the ASRock board though, for its plethora of USB 3.0 ports, including a Type-C on the I.O. panel. It also offers all six SATA ports, along with an M.2 port on the back of the board. The VRM is solid, and you get Thunderbolt 3, Intel-wide, and wireless networking, along with a nice audio solution. The MSI model lacks the same degree of USB 3.0 support, it does drop two of the SATA ports, and of the four that remain, they are very poorly positioned in my opinion. So of the two, I am leaning towards the ASRock model. Then there's the ASUS ROG Strix Z370i Gaming, which does only cost $10 more, and arguably is the best looking board in terms of aesthetics. It does also offer two M.2 ports, though it does only support four SATA ports. The VRM on this one looks great, so for me, I would be tossing up between this ASUS model and the Fatality Z370 Gaming ITX AC. 
I have to admit, I'm not really a fan of the Gigabyte Z370N Wi-Fi at $160 US. It is a good bit cheaper than the other two models we just discussed, but the VRM isn't nearly as impressive. And that said though, the rest of the feature set is pretty solid. However, you can get a similar level of features from the $135 US ASRock Z370M ITX AC. So if I was after an affordable Z370 Mini ITX motherboard, that's what I would go with. So for this category, I'm going to call it a tie between the ASRock and ASUS boards because I honestly can't pick a winner here. It'll really come down to which one you prefer the look of and how they're priced in your region. Anyway, I make up the rules and I say this category can have two winners. There's already loads of great Z370 motherboards to choose from and pricing starts at a little over $100 US. ASUS, ASRock, MSI and Gigabyte have all done a great job with their boards and as I said earlier, for the most part you really can't go wrong. Anyway, I hope these picks have helped you out and if you happen to agree or disagree with me, feel free to jump down in the comment section below and let us know about it. Thanks for watching, I'm your host Steve, see you again next time.